Lee in Anchorage, Alaska writes to me and he says, what does the gain cell do to the signal? Does it degrade it in any way? I have a tube preamp at the moment and I would love to add a DAC and I would love to understand how the gain cell works. Lee, okay. So the gain cell is a way, a circuit that I developed years ago that replaces the volume control. So let me give you a little bit of background. Volume controls, back in the old days, were POTS, potentiometers, variable resistors, which you know, I'm sure you're all familiar with POTS. I mean, I don't know if you can see this over here, but the, the turny things that we used for years, right? And all of them had a sound. All of them contributed in a bad way to sound quality. I mean, straight, we used to have a term, straight wire with gain. And if you could have that and not have a volume control, it always sounded better. As soon as you insert a volume control, a potentiometer, you add some degradation that you hear. And I mean, we used to do experiments back and forth, with and without, you know, just adjusting the gain to be the, the right level versus running it through a pot, which is certainly easier, but it all had an effect on the sound quality. As you, and so we would focus on buying the very best pots we could. We spent a lot of money. We bought Alps and Noble. We, we did stepped attenuators. That We did everything we could to try and minimize the degradation that the potentiometer or the volume control contributed. As time went on and we matured as an industry, everybody became a lard ass. <laughs> got used to what their televisions. Now we had to have remote controls. It, no longer could we have the stereo right by us and turn the volume up and down with our hand. No, 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 no. Now we have to sit there and go, eh, 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 eh. And I, hey, I do the same thing. I don't want to get up and have to turn. <laughs> it's a lot easier just to poke across the thing. But as with anything, that comes at a price. So no longer do we have to have a pot because now we're going to do it electronically. Although, and I don't want to get too, too boring here with the history, the very first remote controls were simply motorized potentiometers. Uh, Alps and Noble still make uh, motorized potentiometers. You've probably seen them. You hit the button and, you know, and this motor turns the pot, right? And up and down. And that, that was the way we remote controlled it. But there's a lot of problems with that. And still, the pots didn't sound great, right? So now we're into the era of remote controlling electronically. So we make electronic attenuators. And there's a whole bunch of ways to do that. There are electronic stepped attenuators where a bunch of CMOS gates go in and out. Uh, uh, anyway, I could draw that for you. But then there were relays, and then we, you've heard them. There, you have a line of relays, and as I turn the, the volume control on the remote up, click, 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 click. And what you're doing is you're building a stepped attenuator, basically, where you have a series resistor and then various shunt resistors going off to ground that, that relays or CMOS switches control that turn the volume up and down, that, that make a bigger or a smaller divider of this one series resistor. Now the sound is completely dependent on the quality of this series resistor. One of the earlier remote control devices I built and designed was during my Genesis days in the 90s, a product called the Stealth. In the Stealth, I spent $35, I think $36, putting in this most beautiful, giant Vache resistor. 35 bucks each for these resistors. I mean, these things were just, almost had no sound to them. They were great. But they're 35 bucks each, $70 for two of them. And, you know, the retail price of every product is a multiple of whatever it costs to build it. So that turns out to be an expensive volume control. All right. As time went on, tons of circuits come in, but we're still using a way to attenuate the signal. So about, oh gosh, how many, well, sometime in the 2000s, I came up with a different idea. And that idea was, 
why don't we get rid of the volume control altogether? Let's simply make a controllable amplitude amplifier to where we can control the gain of the amplifier itself. So all we have is a gain block like we normally have, so we've not added anything. We've gotten rid of the volume control, we're not attenuating anything, and we just, through a remote control, control the gain of the actual amplifier from minus something all the way up to plus something. And when we do that and say, I want this gain or that gain, the volume goes up and down, but we're not going through an attenuator anymore. So that's what a gain cell is. And the way I built it was called a transconductance amplifier. And I'm not going to get into it. a Gilbert cell or transconductance amplifier. And it was a complicated little circuit. But that circuit is a remote controllable variable gain amplifier. And to my ear, it was and remains the best sounding compromise of any kind of preamplifier, even in our BHK. Like here, here's, oh, here's a BHK board. This is what's inside of a BHK preamplifier. Now, this doesn't have a gain cell because it uses tubes, but we do the same sort of thing. We control through the cathode, um, the cathode followers, or the, the amplifier in the cathode, um, the gain of the tube. We change the gain of the tube. So that's, to our ears, a much better way of controlling gain. Don't attenuate it with a pot or an electronic volume control. Control the actual gain of the circuit itself and you'll have a much better sound. And that is our gain cell. Okay. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you tomorrow.